Welcome everyone to the Let's Talk Motorsport podcast. I'm your host uh, alone tonight. Um, Alex is uh, sorry, Daniel is away, so it's just Alex tonight. Um, anyway, we'll get into the action. We had the Spanish Grand Prix over the weekend. It was a, it was okay. It wasn't the worst Grand Prix ever. Um, could have been a bit better, but I'm gonna take it because for once, Max Verstappen, even though he did win. He was under pressure, and he shouldn't have won. It was, uh, unfortunately, Lando Norris who came second's race to lose. Um, and, yeah, we'll get into how, why he didn't win. But, um, yeah, starting off with uh, Max Verstappen, another win under his belt. I've actually lost track of how many wins he's had this year. Not that I also care, to be honest. But, yeah, he won again. But this time, it wasn't as easy as he normally wins. He didn't win by 20-odd seconds, half a, half a track's length. He only won by 2.2 seconds over Lando Norris. So let's get into what actually happened. Um, Lando had the pole position. Max was second. And I'm going to mention George Russell, who started fourth. Uh, George Russell was actually the leader of the race at the start. He led the first two or three laps before Max passed him and said bye. And that was it. Um, but apart from that, um, there was some action throughout the race. Written down a couple notes. Unfortunately, Lando didn't get a great start. Bryce, you uh written Max as a driver of the day. Interesting. As we have Super Max join the, uh, the live stream on TikTok. Thank you for listening. Uh, yeah, Lando had a poor start. He did not get off to the greatest launch. Uh, he kind of forced Max off the road and then down to someone swooping around the outside was actually George Russell, who I thought was going to turn in one of them and crash, but he didn't, um, which is good. Um, after that, yeah, like I said, um, uh, George Russell had the lead for about two or three laps and then Max uh, got told by his engineer, look, I think we should get him early and then move on, which is exactly what happened. Um, George Russell had a yeah very good start. However, he was the guinea pig, I would call him, of the strategy game because it was meant to just be a one-stop, people thought. Then it became a two-stopper thanks to George Russell's first pit stop. And yeah, like I said, it was a bit of the guinea pig. He got pitted first out of all the top runners and kind of led the charge of what was going to happen strategy-wise. So, yeah, look, who knows what should have happened. Um, there was one driver who was trying to do a one-stop strategy, which was Lando Norris. As Bryce writes here, Lando should have won as he was 50 seconds in front of Checo, <laughs> 30 if he was on a two-stop. Yeah, it did seem like the strategy of McLaren's was a bit questionable I don't really I think if Lando had done what everyone else did and pitted when Max did and pitted when Lewis did and pitted when Charles did I think he could have won and he was only two seconds behind so yeah wait what's going on here Brass and I are a bit confused but um yeah look I think I think that still Max would have won in the sense of the strategy being correct for Lando because I think there would have been a bit of more of a battle. But it was pretty obvious to me that Lando had the faster car. And even the commentator was saying that it's nice to finally see that McLaren had the best car all weekend. And also um, Oscar Piastri agreed with that comment when we were in t shirt of. He had said he had the worst weekend of his career, which even finishing in seventh place, he as described as his worst weekend. So, yeah. Oh, well. Lidsville's joined the chat and has come out and said, even though Lando was fast, I still think Max would have won. 
Yeah, well, that's what I was trying to say before. Obviously, Lando should have won, but I think, yeah, I think Max was going to, you know, he was going to win one way or another. He always does. But I think this was the closest battle he's been in in terms of getting the win still. So, yeah. Also, who's, who would have known? We're never going to know now that the results have been done. But I think that Lando still was the best car, or Lando was the best driver of the weekend. Just was unfortunate that strategy may have eluded them a bit. And look, you can't really blame McLaren because it's unfortunate they haven't really been in the position to win that often. And I guess maybe if they had that time again, they probably would have done a few differences. Bryce has written down here that he thinks that Red Bull had the third best car. Well, that's a very big statement. He says, he says uh, McLaren, Ferrari, then Red Bull. I don't know about this weekend, though, with that Bryce, because Ferrari looked pretty mediocre. Um, I think the reason why you're writing that is because Sergio's down where he is, but I think that's Sergio, not the car. Um, Linsville is written here. Uh, we never know what would have happened if Lando got start. Got the start. Yeah, down pack. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Lando start was really ordinary. And if he had kept the lead, or even second place for that matter, I think I think being third was a bit... Uh, made made the challenge a bit more difficult, too difficult. So I think, yeah, if he was second, despite the bad start, and George Ross was in super on the outside, or if he got in front of Max somehow, I think it would have been okay. But, yeah, we'll never know. Uh, Lizville saying, I think Mercedes were stronger than Ferrari this weekend. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the gaps were pretty non-existent. They were pretty similar. So, could have flipped a coin of who was going to finish third to sixth in this race. Um, it was kind of cool that Charles was fighting there against his teammate, but still. Um, yeah. <laughs> who knows what would have happened, honestly. If uh, something would have happened with those two boys. They looked pretty upset with each other, the Ferrari guys. So I think maybe... I think Lewis was a bit too quick, but I think George was definitely gettable um, for Charles. He only finished five tenths behind him. So, um, yeah, speaking of George, the move at the start of the race was incredible. He got screwed over, though, by strategy, I feel. I feel like he was the deserved third place. Unfortunately, they put him on a hard tire at the last stint, which, like I said, he was the guinea pig. So every move that was made by the front runners was based off. George. So that was a bit weird and I didn't like that at all. Especially when he's the car in front of his teammate. He should be deserving of what tyres to pick from. <sighs> Lindsville's written yeah, both Ferrari boys were a bit Argo this week. Or aggro, I should say. Um, Yeah. It's a bit awkward, isn't it? With uh, one driver leaving and one driver staying. Speaking of leaving, we'll get into Carlos and Science's situation in a little bit. Not that we know much about it, because uh, it's taking forever. But um, yeah, anyway, we'll get through the results. Like we've already touched on, Max was stopping one, Lando second. Lewis was uh, back on the podium for the first time this year, which was nice to see for him. He was taking no prisoners during this race. He passed whoever he wanted, whenever he wanted, especially the Ferrari guys, especially Carlos Science. Don't know what he has against Carlos Sainz. He's already got his car for next year. But he decided to just dive bomb the Spaniard and not carry where he was afterwards. He just said, look, I'm going to be at the apex. You're going to be there or move. Either way. So, <laughs> yeah, it was quite interesting and um, great, made for great action. Uh, Elizabeth has written a couple of things here. He thinks Carlos is Williams bound. I don't know. I, look, the media says everything. And even just today, they've said that he might even go to Alpine. Probably not. Um, and he's also written here that it's good to see Lewis back on the podium. Very much agree. Even though I'm not a Lewis Hamilton fan, for now, next year I will be. Um, but <laughs> it's good to see him back on the podium, deserve it of where he was meant to be. Um, yeah. Next on the list in fourth place was George Russell, like we mentioned. Um, he should have had a podium, in my opinion. 
I think he was the fastest out of the two Mercedes drivers, just got screwed on strategy. Um, so Toto had to make Lewis, ha Lewis be happy one way or another. Um, what else? Here we go. Fifth place. Yeah, we got Charles Leclerc, everyone's favourite. Look, I think... He, look, the Ferraris had a bit of a weird race. They they really battled each other. Ah, my partner George has joined the um, the live by offering us a gift as well. Sent a rose. Oh, thank you, sweetie. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> um, what's what Liz was written here? Hope they don't put Kim in the Mercedes and seat next year. Oh, you're a Mercedes fan. Interesting, interesting. I am not. Anyway. We'll get into the driver market after the standings, I swear. Because, um, yeah, there's a lot of information to uh, to dive into. Um, yeah, two Ferrari boys, fifth and sixth. They had a weird race. They were battling each other for most of it. And they couldn't really get close to the podium. And they were pretty far in front of Oscar Piastri, who... Not really sure what happened to him in seventh place there. But he seemed to battle himself, to be honest, this whole weekend. Like, he made mistakes in qualifying on a hot lap that could have put him to the front. Should have been on the podium with his pace. Jordan's joined. Hello, Jordan. How are you? A lot of viewers tonight. Thank you so much for this love and support. And keep the comments flowing in. That's what makes the, the stream more fun, the, um, the podcast better. Keep them coming. Um, yeah, Oscar was we weird. I don't know what really happened to him. Um, no one really knows. He had the pace, just wasn't in the right position. I don't know. It was really odd. Um, speaking of not having any pace and really odd. <laughs> oh, boy. Sergio Perez. I don't know what is wrong with him. Ever since he's got that money, he's been... Mediocre at best. It's been a struggle. Um, before I continue, I've got some comments in. Jordan saying, how am I? I'm good, thank you. Um, what are my thoughts on the, on the weekend's race from Soul Sniper? Uh, not bad. It wasn't too terrible. And it was good to see that Max had a competition. Uh, Lids was written, Oscar had a really bad weekend. Even he was confused about it too. I think it was more him, to be honest. Like It was just really odd. Like he was sabotaging himself. Not on purpose, obviously, but yeah, just issues. Uh, what happened to Oscar's second Q3 lap? He went off again. He went off twice. Both, both Q3 laps, he went off. That's why he started 10th. So he didn't actually put in a, um, a representative lap. Um, Jordan didn't stay to watch the Grand Prix. Look, to be honest, after Max got the lead on lap three, I was tempted to turn it off. But I'm like, no, I have to do it for the podcast. Um, but it wasn't too bad, honestly. Like, it wasn't the best or worst race ever. There were no yellow flags, no retirees, which made it a little boring. Um, I actually would have loved to have seen a safety car because that would have made, oh my God, that would have made it amazing. That would have made it really close. And to see Lando and Max go at it um, is a, <laughs> would have been bloody awesome. Um, actually, I've got a question for the viewers here at live on TikTok. Um, do you agree with this statement I'm going to make? Why do drivers, or sorry, should I say, does it seem like the drivers always just let Max through? Like they're too scared to battle him or there's no point? Because now it seems like there's less discrepancy between all the teams. And I was very annoyed when I saw George Russell especially just let Max through for the lead so he can just drive away. I don't know why they do it. It bothers me. And then what even bothered me more about George Russell is when Lando came up to uh, up to him, who was on fresh medium tyres and George was on uh, old hard tyres, he battled him. He literally kept him behind for like four or five corners, almost a lap. But no, uh, when Max Verstappen's behind a Red Bull, come on through. Go through. No worries. I'll let you go past. It really bothers me. It was like that also for a couple of years with Shane Van Gisbergen and V8s. So everyone was just scared to race him by the looks of it. And I don't know why. I have no idea. 
Um, I've had some support here in the comments. Bryce said yes with a lot of S's. Uh, <laughs> Lidsville, they, I think they are content that Max will just win and no matter what, they would, just won't fight him. Totally agree. Totally agree. They just don't care. Uh, Russell's, sorry, Jordan's written that Russell is a bit too weak. I think he's weak at defending, but he's not weak at attacking, as we saw at turn one. So he's a bit on the fence. So I'm a bit confused with the way he races, to be honest. But speaking of Red Bull, back to Sergio Perez. Yeah, ever since he's got some uh, money in his account, he just doesn't have it. I don't know if it's on purpose. I don't know if it's just bad luck. Uh, pretty sure he hasn't had a Q3 for like four rounds. Um, actually, I'll try to get that up, to be honest, because this, yeah. It's not good. It's really not good. Um, when was the last time he had a Q3 appearance? I think it was Miami. Uh, yeah, qualified fourth in Miami. Did he have one in Imola? No. No, 11th. Yeah. 11th in Imola, 16th in Monaco, that was pathetic. Um, 16th again in Canada, and then Spain he was... Oh, sorry, no, he did qualify 8th. My, my apologies. He qualified 8th, my bad. So, in three races, he didn't have a Q3. Um, sorry, Bryce, yes, I found it. Bryce is our expert on everything... Well, actually, just everything, to be honest. Um, I had some few, few comments come in whilst I was doing my failed research. Um, maybe Russell let him through because of their past. Eh, maybe. Um, Lidsville's written a couple of things. Russell's good, but he also gets in his own way. I think there's a fair few drivers that do that, to be really honest. But I agree. And he's also written Checo is just having a... Is having bad juju. <laughs> I think there's something in something he's drinking because it's not helping at all. Anyway, let's see in Austria, the home of Red Bull, if they can, uh, yeah, do better. But um, yeah, I wouldn't put my money on it. Um, speaking of doing better, ninth and tenth, we have a double Alpine finish again. I'm pretty sure last race they had a double points finish in Canada. Uh, yes, they did. Also 9th and 10th. The exact same results. Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon, respectively, 9th and 10th. This is actually Gasly's third points finish in a row. He finished 10th in uh, Monaco. And yeah, they hadn't scored points before that. Um, but yeah, it's a great result by Alpine. It's kind of weird. Like They were really, really bad at Bahrain at the first couple of races as well. That was like embarrassingly bad and I thought they were the worst team in F1 and they were but not anymore not anymore they've had two Q3 appearances in a row um look I don't really like Alpine I'm not a fan so I don't really particularly care where they finish but it's good to see that a team can actually improve in little time obviously we saw McLaren did that last year exactly like Bryce has just commented but they've done it in less time. Obviously, unless they go on a podium in the next couple of races, it won't be as good as what McLaren did. But nevertheless, just to have an improvement from last on the grid to, what, let's say fifth in a couple of um, in a couple of rounds? Pretty damn good, if you ask me. Obviously, Gasly is going to be there next year, but his teammate has got a big question mark on it with Esteban Ocon leaving the team. Which I feel is a bit funny because ever since the Monaco incident, he's finished in the points twice. So, coincidence? I'm not sure. Uh, Leds was writing here, interesting to see Flavio Briatore back at the team. Yeah, I mean, I thought he was doing good in retirement, but t I guess he's seeing that he's a bit bored and <laughs> wants to come back to um, come back to the team. Apparently there's a weird interview with Flavio. I did not see it. Um, Lidsville's written, I really want to see Sauber get better. I like their drivers and especially their paint scheme. Me too. Uh, we'll get up to them soon. Um, the king of 11th place finishes, I call this year. Nico Hulkenberg once again in 11th. He's having a pretty good year, I must admit. Like, 
I didn't not that I didn't think he deserved to be in F one, but I think his time's coming toward an end. But obviously next year he signed with the Salva slash Audi team in twenty twenty six. So that's cool. I was a bit surprised by that signing as well, but they must know something that I don't. Um so let's see that um I don't know how Salva is going to be next year. It might just be a waiting game for 2026. And I still have this like saying, and I'm willing to bet someone, to be honest, that whatever the 2025 grid is going to look like is going to, is going to be the 2026 grid. I don't know why I have this feeling, but it seems like everyone's just, you know, hyping themselves up, signing everyone up to be set for 2026. That's just my motto of how I think the next two years are going to, be out. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Um, and moving on to twelfth place was Fernando Alonso. Look, I thought Aston Martin were going to be really, really bad, and they weren't fantastic uh, with a twelfth place finish. But it could have been worse. They were a bit further down than twelfth at at uh, one point in the race. Nothing to really say about Aston Martin. Apparently, they brought upgrades to this weekend, which Obviously, it did not work out. Um, but yeah, we'll see how they go next race in Austria. Very short turnaround. They have three races in a row, like back to back to back weekends, uh, which are this week's Spanish. Uh, this upcoming weekend is Austria, and then the weekend after that is um, Great Britain. I believe that's before the big summer break, if I'm not mistaken. No, sorry, the summer break's not ages away. Hang on. I mean, it's a two-week break. Then the big, no, the big gaps in um, end of July. Oh, that'd be for the Olympics, wouldn't it? Yeah, actually, that makes sense. Twenty eighth of Bel, sorry, twenty eighth of July is Belgium, and then twenty fifth of August is um, the Dutch Grand Prix, rounds fourteen and fifteen. Um, so yeah, that's quite interesting, actually. Didn't know that. Um. 13th place was Joe Guanyu. Um, not a bad effort from him, leading the way for the Salva team. Um, let's kind of see what happens with him. It's a bit of a question mark on where he's going to be next year. Obviously, it's not going to be at Salva unless they pull some sort of miracle. Um, quite hard done by, I feel like he was just never in a good car. Kind of like Logan Sargent, I guess, but at least Joe is a bit more competitive. Lids was written here back to Alonso. Feel bad for him. Great driver in mediocre equipment. I feel like that is a lot of drivers at the moment. You know, good drivers, bad equipment. That's just the storyline of F1, to be honest. But yeah. Rice has written here that Joe needs to leave F1. Yeah, I think that's the way it's going to be for him. To be honest, I'm not sure where he even really came from to get into F1. I know that. Um, there was a few things he did in F2, and obviously money is a big thing as well. Uh, Michael has joined the stream. How you going, mate? Um, 14th, Lance Stroll, uh, once again for Aston Martin. Yeah, there's not really much to say about Aston Martin this weekend. It's a bit mediocre. Um, but Lance, not too far away from his teammate Fernando Alonso. Um, speaking of mediocre, the RB... Cash app, whatever you want to call them. Um, 15th place. Michael, I'm great, mate. Thanks for tuning in to uh, tonight's uh, pod. Someone's pockets, <laughs> Bryce has written, someone's pockets were massive for Joe. Yeah, uh, there's a few drivers that have paid their way into F1. Um, yeah, Daniel Ricciardo, unfortunately, with a very disappointing 15th place. Um Funny enough, he led the way for the team. <laughs> Goes to show how unfortunately disappointing they were this weekend. Um, hang on, there's some comments here. Michael's written, what has happened, in nice words, to Aston Martin? Um, well, Daddy is paying for everything in Lawrence Stroll, so as long as his checkbook's open, I've no idea what's going on with them. Um... Lidsville's written Stroll needs to bow out and give someone the spot, not if dad has control. Once again, Lawrence Stroll doing whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> um, anyway, back to Daniel Ricciardo. Yeah, weird to see that him 
lead the way for the team, but be 15th. Um, yeah, they had a pretty shocking weekend. Neither of them got to Q2 um, by a bit of a margin. So, yeah, I guess we'll see what happens around Austria. Usually they go pretty well around the, the former Alpha Tower team. So we'll see. And I know Daniel likes the track. So, um, yeah, hopefully some better results for them uh, this upcoming weekend. Bryce has written, I mean, heck, if my dad had the money, I would be an F1 too. Yeah, oh, 100%. Agreed. Um, no denying that. I think, yeah, if that was possible, for sure. Um, that few Bottas, another driver, I think it's just there. I think his passion of it is a bit worn off. Spends 90% of his week cycling. Um, which is not saying it's a bad thing, I'm just saying that he's not really all there. Um, there are rumours that he might end up in a Mercedes car next year, not the Merc itself, but either a Williams, maybe a Merc, I doubt it though. Um, yeah, probably a Williams, or even just staying at Audi. Who knows? Um... We've also got another driver next 17th, Kevin Magnussen, who is questionable for next year. Probably not. Um, with Haas, probably going to go in a different direction with some younger drivers. Um, Kevin Magnussen, 17th. Yeah, he was unfortunately a bit nowhere um, this week. Um, Michael's written here, so a bit off topic, but there's a new F1 shop in Melbourne opening next week. Um, that's cool. I wish I lived in Melbourne. I don't. Uh, otherwise, I would be at that shop and probably spending all my money on well, I'm wearing. Actually, I bought this from the store in Melbourne. And this. There you go. Um, yeah, we're wearing McLaren stuff. Um, next. Bad weekend for Williams. Really, really bad weekend. Alex Albon and Logan Sargent qualified on the back row, I'm pretty sure, or very near it. And Alex, unfortunately, finished 18th. Um, yeah, not a good weekend at all, unfortunately, for the Williams team. Um, next, Yuki Tsunoda, really weird weekend for him. He's usually consistently around the end of the top 10 um, every week. But yeah, this week, uh, not a good weekend for the RB Honda team. And last but not least, we have uh, Logan Sargent, once again, was there. That's all I've got to say about him. Um, anyway, let's move on to the, uh, let's go Teams Championship for now. Um, all right, we got the Red Bull team, obviously on top with 330 points. Oh, actually, there was an interesting stat about the Red Bull team. In the last thing, it was five races. Max has scored 83 points, and Checo's scored 8. Yeah. Have fun in the next two years. All right. Uh, Ferrari P2 on 270 points, so there's a 60-point gap between those two. McLaren closing the gap um, is now 237, oh, 237 on 237 points. Uh, Mercedes is on 151 in fourth place. Aston Martin's still in fifth with 58 points. 30 points ahead of the RB uh, cash-up team. Uh, Alpine now is in seventh with a double points finish. They've gone ahead of Haas, who are in eighth. Uh, Williams in ninth and still yet to score a point, unfortunately, is the Sauber team. Um, all right, last section of the podcast will be about the driver standings. There is... Some movement here. Um, let's see what happens. So I just had uh, Brett join the uh, chat. If Bottas can't get a drive, what happened? What about by Airbus? I don't know what that is. Anyway, let's go to the <laughs> driver's standings. Um, Max Verstappen uh, leading the way on 219 points. He's only... Is my maths good? 79 points in front of Lando Norris. So that gap is not as big as I thought it would be. Lando Norris is, for the first time, in um, second place in his career, uh, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, Michael Hazer asked, am I going to be at any supercar races this year? Yes. Um, 
most likely, or well, obviously definitely the Adelaide, Adelaide 500, hopefully with Ivan and Daniel for Let's Talk Motorsport in some way or another. Um, obviously, I would go to Tab and Bend if they had a race because we're SA based. Um, who knows? I've got Bathurst circled on my calendar, but that'll be a last minute decision. Um, Charles Leclerc in third, ahead of Carlos Sainz in fourth. Uh, Sergio Perez still somehow is in fifth. Uh, Oscar Piastri in sixth. George Russell in uh, seventh place, ahead of Lewis Hamilton in eighth. God, oh, weird to see Lewis Hamilton in eighth. Uh, Alonso in ninth. Yuki Tsunoda tenth. Lance Stroll in eleventh. Daniel Ricciardo in twelfth. Uh, Oliver Behrman still in 13th, um, somehow. Uh, Nico Hulkenberg is in 14th, Pierre Gasly 15th, Ocon 16th, uh, Alex Albon 17th, Kevin Magnussen 18th, Joe Guanyu 19th, Bottas 20th, 21st is Logan Sargent. Uh, Michael just asked me um, if I've been to Bathurst before. I have been to Bathurst, just not for the race. I did some laps around the track, just on a normal normal day. Um, Lidsville said, is he going to go to Bathurst as well? He's got a mate booked for him, which is cool. Yeah, look, a um, bit of a side note here, obviously. But um, yeah, Bathurst is on my um, bucket list to do. I'm not sure if it's going to be this year or next. But yeah, definitely going to be on the agenda. I know Daniel wants to go too, so... Let's see if we can get the uh, Let's Look Minded Sport Boys a, um, a, t- a ticket if anyone wants to send us there. Michael's offered a, a corporate pass. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll keep that in touch. Um, I'll get Daniel to message you after this. <laughs> um, but, yeah, if there's any more questions about the race, feel free to pop them through right now. Um, yeah, I'll stay online for a bit. But um, for the Spotify, YouTubes, all of the podcasts, um, thank you for, very much for listening to the stream. Uh, for TikTok, I'll leave it on for a couple more minutes. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and good night. <laughs>